Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. <sighs> well, guys, this is it. The big one. The shit stopper. The constipation of American cinema. A bowel blockage from which nothing of any value can possibly be removed. What is said to be one of the worst films of all time. I am, of course, talking about the indescribable terror that is Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin. We are talking about a movie that's so bad that lawyers are actually making reasonable arguments that their client's crime may be horrible, but at least they didn't make Batman and Robin. And in the remotest parts of Southeast Asia, it is still considered the number one preferred form of execution. Tokehono, see it, Tokito, see it. No! No, please! Anything with that! So as you can tell, I am not looking forward to reviewing this stinker. However, before I review it, let's take a look at the declining history of these Batman movies. The first Batman film was released in 1989 under the direction of then-newcomer Tim Burton. It was edgy, dark, and made just as much for adults as it was for children. In fact, it was made more for adults, and continues to be the highest grossing Batman movie to date. The second film, Batman Returns, was also very edgy and dark, but maybe a little too dark. A lot of people didn't gravitate towards the often disgusting Penguin or the exceptionally depressing storyline. While the first Batman ended on a triumphant note, Batman Returns ending was more bittersweet and left a lot of people feeling kind of empty. While still a big hit, Batman Returns wasn't the mega blockbuster Warner Brothers was hoping for, so Burton was booted off the movie sequels and replaced with another director. Enter Joel Schumacher, director of the third Batman film, Batman Forever, which was definitely more kid-friendly, bringing in stars like Jim Carrey, some bright flashy colors, and some really corny one-liners. It's the car, right? Chicks love the car. It wasn't good, but it certainly wasn't horrible. It was the Batman film studios always wanted, safe and marketable. And as you would imagine, it was a big hit. So logically, Schumacher was called in to direct the next one. And seeing how this is one of the worst films of all time, special precautions have been made today to prevent me from killing myself. For example, um, all sharp objects have been removed from the building. Uh, they took away my ties so that I don't hang myself. And, uh, oh, they also padded the edge of my glasses so that I don't jab them in the sides of my throat. But, they didn't count on my cyanide pills. So, let's take a look and see just how bad Batman and Robin really is. Well, this doesn't seem too bad. They're just suiting up, there's the Batmobile, the music's nice. Maybe this won't be so horrible after all. I want a car. Chicks dig the car. This is why Superman works alone. So yeah, if you're not a fan of one-liners, don't worry. There's only 167 billion more of them. You lie! So the story centers around our main heroes Batman, played by George Clooney, and Robin, played by Chris O'Donnell, as they plan to stop the evil Mr. Freeze from, you guessed it, taking over the world. Of course! It opens with Freeze, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, robbing the Gotham Museum. So our heroes suit up for battle for the opening fight scene. And yes, those costumes come complete with bat nipples and bat asses. All right, y'all know what's coming. The ambiguous gay duo. Now that we got that joke out of the way, let's continue. Mr. Freeze is stealing a diamond that apparently powers his Sub-Zero suit. Apart from that, his only goal seems to be making jokes about a subject matter that unfortunately lends itself to a lot of insufferable puns. And I'll give you four guesses as to what that subject matter is. A. Celebrity gossip. B. Political satire. C. Family dilemmas. Or D. Ice! Ice man. Come and take some ice. Can you be cold? Chill. Freeze where? Well. Cool party. Stay cool. If your answer was D, no fucking shit! Thanks for playing. So Batman comes busting in along with his sidekick Robin on his motorcycle. As the fight scene rages, we get an onslaught of lame lines and over-the-top stunts. Nice catch. You break it, you buy it. In fact, you may notice a similarity to another familiar style. Can't quite put your finger on it? Maybe this'll help. That's right, this Batman movie has stopped moving forward with its dark storyline and complex character development, and has instead gone back to the campy, bright, and colorful style of the original Adam West TV show. HELP! 
So as the fight scene continues, we see Batman and Robin literally skate across the icy floor playing hockey with a valuable hunk of diamond. Do I even have to make fun of this? Meanwhile, Freeze manages to hook up a rocket that'll launch him into space. What killed the dinosaurs? Gee, is it something having to do with ice? The ice age! Batman works his way up the rocket where the villain freezes him to the wall. Freeze, you're mad. Yes, listen to the sane man in the bat suit. I think not. Robin comes to rescue him as they surf their way down to the ground off the doors of the rocket. The only thing that would make this scene lamer is if Robin actually shouted Cowabunga. Cowabunga! <sighs> as if this scene couldn't possibly be any longer, Batman and Robin chase Freeze into another building, where Robin gets frozen by the ray gun. Stay cool, bad boy. God, how much longer is this movie? Ten minutes? We're only ten minutes in? Oh, this film is gonna be the end of me. Show some mercy. All right, so after Freeze gets the diamond back, Batman stays behind to thaw out bad boy. Your emotions make you weak. That's why this day's mine. I'll kill you next time. Why not kill him now? I wish I knew. As you can tell, Schwarzenegger is easily by far the worst actor in this movie. I've got some wild oats to sow. Until this person came along. And you are? Poison Ivy. Ah yes, Poison Ivy. The woman who started off as a nerdy environmental scientist who works in the most cliched of evil laboratories. Seriously, this place is so cliched, all you need is a strike of lightning on the building. <clears throat> She's shocked to find out that her boss is turning people into Mexican wrestlers to auction off to power-hungry dictators. Finding out that his diabolical plan is revealed, her boss takes it well. I'm afraid you'll have to die. <laughs> From all the toxins and chemicals arises a flowery femme fatale known as Poison Ivy, who kills people by giving them venom-filled smooches. Talk about the kiss of death. Why are all the gorgeous ones homicidal maniacs? By using her love of deadly plants, Poison Ivy's diabolical goal is to, you guessed it, take over the world. Of course! Meanwhile, back at Wayne Manor, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson get a visit from an unlikely visitor. Alfred's niece, Barbara, come all the way from Britain. Uh, the new computer sciences division. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just can't understand you under that incredibly thick British accent. I don't know, all this luxury really isn't my style. Definitely Liverpool. London's kind of rough. Meanwhile, we discover that the villainous Mr. Freeze actually has a wife who has an incurable disease. So he keeps her frozen in the comfort and hidden safety of a neon-lit ice cream pub. How can nobody figure out that he's in there? It's the equivalent of Walt Disney trying to hide out in Disneyland. I mean, don't you think somebody would take a look? It's really ridiculous. While trying to figure out a cure for his beloved wife, Free spends most of his time conducting an orchestra of killer Eskimos to sing I'm Mr. White Christmas, I'm Mr. Snow. I'm Mr. Snow. That's just stupid. Meanwhile, the Batman who used to hide from the limelight and steal any hidden photographs taken of him is now making public appearances at a sexist auction where men bid on good-looking women to take out on a date. While there, they come across the seductive Poison Ivy, who blows a hypnotizing perfume that makes men bow to her every will. And as you sadly might have guessed, Batman and Robin actually start bidding on her. One million dollars. Two million. Three million. Four million. Seven million. Never leave the cave without it. A bat credit card? They gave him a bat credit card? They had the balls to give one of the greatest superheroes of all time a bat credit card? No! No! Does not compute! Does not compute! It does not compute! It does not! I apologize for that outrage. It was childish and immature. I just get a little peeved when I see one of my childhood icons carrying a bad credit card, you bastards! I'll kill you! I'll kill you, all of you! All of you will die! You'll get the gas! <clears throat> Rape my childhood, will you? You'll all die! You will all die! <sighs> okay. <sighs> I'm fine. I'm cool. I'm fine. I'm fine. So. After Batman uses the, you know what? Mr. Freeze busts in and ruins the party. But through an exciting chase, Batman catches Mr. Freeze doing God knows what to him under that cape and places him in Arkham Asylum. But Robin is angry because he wanted to get Mr. Freeze. Could have made that jump. Sometimes counting on someone else is the only way you win. In 
fact, most of Robin's dialogue is just bitching and moaning. She loves me and not you. This is no partnership. I want a Robin signal in the sky. It's Batman and Robin, not Robin and Batman. You could pretty much just replace his dialogue with... <laughs> Look, I made a mistake, I'm sorry. Meanwhile, in story number 12, we see that Barbara gets out all her rage and emotions by partaking in pointless motorcycle chases. After Dick Grayson saves her from the world's worst blue screen effect, Barbara reveals a stunning secret about Alfred. How he's hiding the pain all the time. Alfred's sick. Oh, Alfred is sick? Alfred is sick? I mean, do we really have to concern ourselves with the butler in this movie? I mean, come on, how sick could he possibly be? He's dying. Awkward. So Bruce and Dick decide to give him a leave of absence due to reasons of dying. Here, Bruce and Alfred have a very heartfelt talk. He also reveals his personal appreciation for Alfred. But maybe a little too much. I love you, old man. And I love you. The ambiguous gay duo some real issues with women, you know that? Meanwhile, Poison Ivy breaks Freeze out of prison and steals his Sub-Zero suit. By the way, the Riller suit here is kind of clever. But Freeze needs his diamonds from his headquarters to keep his suit active. I'll help you grab your rocks. Ha 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 ha. Ivy agrees to pick them up while also pulling the plug on Freeze's wife, leaving her to die. I wish I was in that jar. You can say that again. The Cape Crusaders try to stop her, but are turned against one another because of their lust for Ivy. She wants to kill you, dick. You watch her language. Ivy escapes and leaves Batman and Robin to fight over her. What happened? How'd they get away? How dare you didn't stop them? It's not like this is a job for the police. How dare you didn't stop them? As Ivy returns, she tells Freeze that Batman killed his wife. So Freeze vows to take vengeance on society. Sheesh, all that's missing is for Freeze to shout out first Gotham, then the world. First Gotham, and then the world! I hate this. Look at that. That's so lame. This is idiotic. I really hate this. This is so stupid. I wish I could kill myself. Wow, oh, that's horrible. Oh my god, I can't believe how bad this is. I wish I could kill myself. So while Freeze tries freezing the world, Ivy tries to seduce the dynamic duo. And here's something you never thought you'd see in this movie. A man kissing a woman. No, Robin, no, you're just confused. But rubber lips sink ships as Batman and Robin put their few behind them and are ready to kick some green thumbs. Meanwhile, Barbara finds out what anyone with a brain cell could, that Bruce and Dick are Batman and Robin. And you gotta love her expression when she finds it out. <laughs> she finds the Batcave where a virtual reality Alfred, I know, just go with it, tells her that he knew she would find out who they were, discover the Batcave, and has even prepared a Batsuit for her to go out and fight crime. Oh, well, of course. So Barbara helps her colleagues by becoming the fearsome Batgirl, the only character in this movie who should have bat nipples, but doesn't seem to have them. I never thought a cat fight between Uma Thurman and Alicia Silverstone could be so boring. So she defeats Poison Ivy by knocking her into her own man-eating plant. I think the only thing missing here is for Poison Ivy to shout out curses. Go ahead, say it. I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker! You know you want to. You know you want to do every cliche in the book. Go ahead. Say it! Say it! Say it! Curses! God damn this movie! It did it! It finally did it! Batman has driven me batshit crazy! Oh. <sighs> Tranquilizers. Always come prepared when Joel Schumacher's involved. Hmm. So Batgirl saves the dynamic duel and reveals her secret identity. Bruce, it's me, Barbara. A butcher to ba Barbara? Who would have guessed? That mask just hides your face so well. 
I find that unlikely. So the three of them set out to stop Freeze after having a change of wardrobe, apparently, and plan to unfreeze the city. It's unlike to reverse a freezing process. Sunrise in five hours. Here. But it's morning in the Congo. We could relay the sunlight. From the other side of the equator. It'll take the satellites about a minute to realign. Satellites could be positioned to thaw the city directly, but that'd take a computer genius. I'm on it. All right, I'll set the telescope, you thaw the mirrors. Oh, thank God I don't care. So through a series of lame lines, ridiculous stunts, and over-the-top effects, our heroes defeat Mr. Freeze and blow up his giant ray gun. Wow. Just think about how many starving children we could have saved with the money used for these effects. Talk about your cold shoulder. After that, they melt all that nasty snow covering Gotham down to your simple basic rubber icicles. But wait a minute, what about Alfred? Isn't he still at death's door? Well, luckily, Freeze's wife has the exact same disease as Alfred, and having a change of heart gives Batman the cure that he kept in his suit. And he didn't use this on his wife because... So as you can imagine, they put Freeze in jail, get the cure to Alfred, and they all live happily ever after. But wait, what to do about Barbara? You are going back to school. Bruce, you're never going to win this argument. Partners? Partners. So you see, kids, the moral of the story is drop your studies, forget all about school, dress up in tight leather, and live your life as a superhero. Why? Because Batman said it's okay. I'd say this is a horrible lesson for the kids, but I don't think it really matters. No kid ever saw this movie. Batman was a gigantic bat bomb. Bat bomb. Bat bomb. Why? Because this film is so terrible, so horrific, and so god awfully bad that there's only one word that could possibly sum it up. You want to know what that word is? I'll tell you. It's super crap a fuck horrific it's beyond a bullshit A film so bad the censors really ought to go and pull it Sadly there's not many words that only rhyme with bullshit Super crap a fuck horrific it's beyond a bullshit Fuck a little bit fuck alive fuck a little bit fuck alive Here's a film that's so awful I'd rather have a guy Come circumcise me with an axe and poke me in the eye. I'd rather drink a giant bowl of ape and monkey's blue. And there's another million things that I would rather do. Super crap, a fuck horrific, it's be all a bullshit. Film so bad the censors really ought to go and pull it. Sadly, there's not many words that only rhyme with bullshit. Super crap, a fuck horrific, it's be all a bullshit. No, really, no, it's it's awful.